All right, everyone. So what we're going to look at today is the social network of Facebook. You might have heard of it. And so everyone here probably has a Facebook account. As I've said before, I'm not a fan of Facebook. I don't know if I said it here, actually, but I'm not a fan of Facebook. Like I said, I like to use Twitter uh, compared to Facebook, and I like to use Google Plus ahead of them all, basically. But Facebook is important for us in a business sense because it uh, allows us to tap into so much potential clientele because there's over a billion people, maybe like 1.3 billion or 1.2 billion or something. There's a lot of people on Facebook, a lot of companies also. So it would behoove us to try to tap into the biggest network because uh, I believe I've said it in this class, like let's say a, a coupon gets sent to a thousand people. Uh, some amount of people are just going to throw the coupon away and some amount of people are actually going to use the coupon. But it costs the same amount of money for everyone to get that coupon, whether they use it or not. If we have Facebook, we can use it for free. We can set it up for free. We can reach a thousand people, and maybe 500 will not care, and 500 will care, but it didn't cost us anything more to market to all of them than it would have done to have a printed coupon. Now, Facebook also has the ability for you to target your posts. That, however, is a paid system. And you can pay as little as one dollar and you'll be able to reach more people than if you didn't. So unfortunately, I have to start off by saying the big dirty secret at the moment of Facebook is if you're a business and you really want to get found by people, you have to pay. But like I said, you can pay as little as a dollar, a dollar per campaign, ten dollars, three dollars, twenty dollars, a hundred dollars. You'll reach more people and so forth. I'll get to that eventually. But uh, if we go to Facebook.com and we take a quick look at my company's Facebook page here, facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. Just like you have a Twitter account, twitter.com slash your company, there's facebook.com slash your company. So my company, PMD Interactive, is right there, and Coke is there, and Southwestern College is there, and Chipotle is there, and Nike is there. Every company basically is on Facebook. That's part of the reason nowadays that Facebook has changed the game. It used to be that companies could reach potential customers a lot easier. But because now there's so many people, so many uh, companies on Facebook, now they've tweaked things that if you really want to reach people, you should pay for it. You, and you think, well, that's unfair. It is. But if you're going to play in, in Facebook's playground, you play by Facebook's rules. Right? Or either you don't play. And you can do well by being on Twitter or being on Instagram or being on vine or whatever and doing it all for free and it'll work but again if you want to reach uh, more people Facebook is the place to be so on a personal level or a personal note I don't like to use Facebook but on a business I love it because Facebook for business is very powerful very effective and that's what we're going to be talking about today so the way this works is you're going to need we're going to create a Facebook business page the Facebook business page is going to come from your personal page. So a big mistake that people often make in the beginning is, you know, you go to Facebook and it asks you, okay, log in or create an account. And the mistake that people make is they start to create an account on Facebook for my company. Facebook does not want that. Facebook wants a person to create an, a regular person account and then create a business account. That's what I'm going to show you. If you've already previously created a business page, but created it as a person, we need to talk, or I need to talk with you to fix that because Facebook doesn't like that. And by not liking that basically means you're violating their terms of service, which means they could cancel your account. So if you created a Facebook page, and instead of putting your first name, last name, you put your company name, you're not following Facebook's rules, your page could be shut down. So no worries, I'll help you how to fix, show you how to fix that if you did that. But I'm going to show you from the beginning how to set up a business page. Here's the business page for my company, like I said. It looks just like any other person's, you know, personal business, uh, a personal Twitter page. It's got pictures, it's got maybe videos, it's got links, jokes, whatever. But the big difference here is it's got the concept of likes. This is when you're hearing about like my page like us on Facebook, you know, uh, get a coupon if you like us, 
That can only happen with a business page. You can't like a person's page. You can like their posts and stuff, but you can't like the page. Another um, plus of having a Facebook business page is that you'll also be able to set it up for people to check in, to have visitors. So if you've got a location where you want people to, to actually go and they're on their, on their mobile device and they have the Facebook app, they can check in on your business. We'll see why you might want to care about people checking into your business or not. You can also have it uh, give you reviews. That's useful because let's say you're not the only web designer out there. But you're the one with five stars and everyone else has four stars. Who do you think a potential customer might care about more? The one with five stars, perhaps. So those are some benefits of having a Facebook page. People will be able to like your page, give you reviews, check into it, and so forth. So what we need to do in order to create this page is we first need to log in as your personal account. How many of you do not have a Facebook personal account? Okay, seems like everyone's got one, so step one is done. Log in with your personal account, and then we'll take it from there. So you are, you are already to have two accounts in the, in the same account? Nope, it's going to be one. Account? It's going to be not. It's not really different accounts. It, they call it pages. So you're going to have one account with multiple pages, business pages. So go ahead and log in. All right, so you want to log in to your personal account. Hopefully nothing NSFW appears here. Uh, but you want to have your own personal account first, which everyone pretty much has. And then let me show you this, and then I'll show you how to do this. At the top right corner, you should see a little black triangle. If you click there, notice my account here says Use Facebook As. And I can use Facebook as these different business pages. You probably don't have that. I'll show you how to create that in just a moment. But this is what Facebook wants. They want you to have a personal account. And then we will create business pages. And then we switch between them. So one person can manage, can have access to multiple business pages, as you see here. So I'm managing these Facebook pages for a variety of clients. I just switch back and forth between them and I'm able to edit them, post on them, and so forth. So did everyone manage to log into your personal account? So you're in your Facebook page, in your personal account, and if you click the little black triangle up there, you will see two options. Create a page, manage a page. So once you've got pages, you can go to manage and manage them. You can have more than one person manage a page. That's very useful. The default Twitter setup only has one login for everyone that wants to edit the Twitter account. By that I mean uh, like the company Chipotle. They've got their Twitter account, Chipotle, and they've got like their 10 social media gurus, and they log in, but they all log in with the same password, and they can all edit the Chipotle Twitter account. That might not be as secure, because if one of those people doesn't practice good cybersecurity and they get hacked, whoops, the Chipotle account got hacked, which it actually did. I mentioned it in this class, didn't I, a few, like two months ago? Chipotle got hacked in the middle of the night and suddenly all this Nazi stuff started to appear on their, on their Chipotle account? Well, someone uh, got sloppy and their account got hacked. I bring that up because on Facebook it's different. Every person that has access to the business page has their own unique login. 
because it's their personal login information. So if there are 10 of us in this company and I logged in or, or a friend or the other person in the company gets hacked, all I have to do is go to manage page and remove them as a manager of the page until they get their account sorted out. So you can have multiple people working on one Facebook business page, no problem. <laughs> What we're going to do here then is instead create a page because we don't have one yet. Or well, you probably don't have one. If you do have one, well then just uh, sit tight for a moment and then we'll catch up with you. But here, go ahead and click on the little triangle and select create page. Your first question is what kind of business or what kind of page are you going to create on, on Facebook? And you can create a, a Facebook page for anything, literally. A business, uh, you know, the city of San Diego, Save the Whales campaign, my band, even crazy things. I remember seeing a Facebook page that was called something like, if I get one million likes, I will name my child Megatron. And they did. I don't know if they named their child Megatron for real, but they did get a million likes on their page. So you can make a Facebook page about anything. What you need to decide here most likely is a local business or a company. Um, you could do it for a product, you know, if you've got one product that you're selling, you could do it for that. You know, you, there's a, let's say, a soft drink. You could create it as a product. Uh, if you're a nonprofit organization or whatever, you've got cause or community, entertainment. You know, these categories are kind of big. There's no wrong answer, but the thing is that if you select a local business or place, that's the one that gives you access to let people check in. So if you do have a restaurant on Main Street and you want people to check in on Facebook, then you want a local business. The thing is, though, that they want to confirm you are a real local business by calling you at the business. Because what if I create a page for my competitor and start putting crazy stuff there? Well, the way they try to prevent that is they want to confirm that you are the legitimate owner and operator of that business. So if you're doing local business, you have to verify the account. So, hello. so if you can't verify it at this point, don't worry. You can do it later. But most likely, you'll be okay if you select company. That's what I'm going to do. So my website, uh, victorsart.info. I'm going to make a Facebook page for it. Select company, some categories, lots of categories to choose from. Try to choose the category that best fits with your, with your business. If, it, if you can't find one that really fits, I think there's just a generic one, like um, company. You know, hopefully you can find a category where, is you, where yours fits into, and you can always change this, of course. But maybe select company if none of them fit. Yes. You could if it makes sense for you, if your if your website and what you're about would be community, yeah. Like we've got Club Web here in this department. Uh, that's set up as a community because it's a, it's a club or a cause or whatever, so that'll work. Yeah. Your your business is, is company. Yes, uh, I'm trying to remember. It's either company or local business. I think it's local business because we do have the ability to check in. So uh, if you want people to check into your business, it should be local business. But we had to set it up. They had to confirm it. They, they ha there's an automated robot that calls you to your to your business to confirm a code. So if you can't answer the phone right now, you might not be able to select local business. So for the moment, I'm trying to find something about art. And either it's there and I can't see it, or it's not there. So I'm just going to select company. <coughs> company name. So you're going to type a company name. That is not the same as your Facebook address. Remember when I showed you up here, facebook.com slash pmdinteractive? 
right now it's not asking you to type that address. It'll ask you at another point. So that company name can have uppercases and spelling, and it can be, I guess, 100 words long. But eventually, when we want your Facebook address, that's in a different screen. This will be Victor's art. There's the terms of service that no one, no one reads, but everyone agrees to. So you can read it if you'd like. But basically, I guess it's saying, you know, you own your own content, but you have to follow the rules of Facebook, which is like no harassment and like uh, violence and hate speech and all of that. So, okay, get started. Now, depending on your, um, on your choices, you may get different steps here. Mine has one, two, three, four. About, profile picture, add to favorites, and preferred page audience. You might have something different. That's okay. I'll help you out during lab. Um, but mine is saying, tell people what your page is about. Um, so a short description, what your business is about. Basically, maybe what you have on your Twitter, on your Twitter page. You can copy and paste that. I think they give you a little bit more space here than the Twitter bio, which is 160 characters. So whatever fits there in a couple of short sentences that describes what your business is about, and it's important to fill this out accurately because um, one thing that we'll look at is, well, Facebook has a built-in search feature. This is searching inside of Facebook, not throughout the whole web, just in Facebook. And if you fill out your biography and other content, when someone searches for web designers in San Diego, they might find you. So if in your, you know, about here, you write something like web designer in San Diego and graduate of Southwestern College, etc. Those are some keywords that could appear when someone searches um, for those concepts. So I'm going to write here. Let's see, this is my art page. I'm going to say buy original artwork from Victor Campos. Every piece is unique and one of a kind. So that's kind of explaining what that page is. When someone searches and they look for art in San Diego or something, um, my page might pop up, and so will 40 other pages. So if my description stands out to people, then they might actually go to my page. Then it says, OK, type in your web address. So uh, on the Twitter assignment, most of you were did that well in that you filled in your bio and you filled in a link to your GoDaddy WordPress site. Even if it's not complete, um, you should put that link. And here it says put your website or your Twitter or your Yelp or whatever you want, but I would recommend your website. So your GoDaddy website. You can edit this again later. I'll show you where, but go ahead and save info. It'll want you to add a picture, just like Twitter. I don't have a picture handy, so I'll do it later, but I do recommend you do add the picture as soon as you can, because again, you might not be taken very seriously. If your Facebook page looks like the generic icon like everyone else, like every other spammer, so you want to put in your unique icon uh, as soon as you can. I don't have it handy, so I'll skip it. Did anyone get uh, an item anywhere here that also said something like maybe claim your Facebook address? Yeah. Okay, if you did, for your for yours for whatever reason, it said, okay, put in your Facebook address. So uh, if you have an idea of what to write up there, go ahead and do so. So most likely it'll be your Twitter address, right? That short, that short address. You can change it, 
but I believe you can only change it one more time. So if you decide to change the, the name of the business or add to it on your Facebook address, it will only let you change it once more. It didn't, sh it didn't pop up for me. It didn't let me add a Facebook address yet. That's in another screen that I'll show you. Then it takes us to add to favorites. I would say ignore this. To me, this is worthless because for me it's happened, and it might happen to you as a beginner, that I accidentally forget which account I'm posting as because I have my personal account and I manage a bunch of businesses accounts. So I might forget, am I on my account or am I on the business? And it has happened to me. I try to post something you know, some funny thing for my friends and family, and whoops, I posted it to the business. The business doesn't care about that cat picture, or vice versa. I'm thinking I'm posting something to the business, and I craft an amazing post, and I post it, and whoops, it went to my friends and family, not to the business. And part of the problem is here, by putting your, uh, putting your company page in your favorites. The favorites is a panel that appears on the left side, to access the most frequently used things. And you would think, that's useful. I can switch over to my business page easily if it's in the favorites. But as I've said, I, even I've had the problem where I forget which account am I working with because I switched over this way. I'll show you another way to switch between accounts that has been foolproof. So I would not add to favorites. Skip. And this is cool. This is different. It wasn't always like this, but now, because again, there's over a billion people on Facebook. We want to target, target audience. One of the things in your company profile or marketing strategy, somewhere there, remember I asked you, what's your target audience? Think about who would care about your business. That's uh, going to help you on your website and in social media, like here. Because, yes, I want everyone to buy my artwork but perhaps um, younger people will like it more because maybe my art speaks to them more. It's got, you know, surrealism in it or something that attracts that audience. And maybe 50-year-olds might not like my art. So here I will take a moment to target my page, and then I'll mention interests, which is very important. So I'm going to say, first of all, well, location... Um, for the moment, I'm going to focus on San Diego. The people that would care most about my page are in San Diego. So notice there's San Diego, San Diego, etc. San Diego, Texas, they ripped us off apparently. San Diego, Venezuela, they ripped us off. But I'm going to select San Diego, California. You can target it to more than one place. You can say people in San Diego will care as well as Los Angeles. There's also Los Angeles in Chile, apparently, and Texas. Look at that. So I'm going to say Los Angeles and San Diego are my target demographics for location. Age range, I'm going to say 18 to 30-year-olds. Maybe people that are a little older might not really like my art. This is not to say that this will only be visible to these demographics. You might think, well, I'm not now I'm limiting myself. No, this is going to be this is going to be playing to Facebook's algorithm to try to show you to the most relevant people. But you can always, of course, target whoever you want. I'll show you how to do that later. But here I'm trying to help Facebook to help me. All genders is fine, or if you've got a product that really want you want to target for women, you turn that on and your content will go more toward women. And then interests. You know how you log into Facebook and it might ask you, have you seen any movies? Or what are you reading? You know, it asks you a question and it shows you some options and you select, yeah, I went to that Daft Punk concert. You know, you, you fill in your, you're filling in interests, and that's, you might think, yeah, I'm filling in my profile, that's fun. 
But what's happening behind the scenes is Facebook is collecting all of that data so that it can then show you the stuff that you care about. And why that's important for you is because you want your Facebook page to be shown to people that would care about your content. So these interests are what people have set up their profiles about, what they like, and so forth. You can start typing something or you click browse here and that might give you a better idea. It'll also kind of tell you how many are in that group. Look at that entertainment. 1.1 uh, billion people um, have chosen they like something in entertainment. And if you go further down, let's say entertainment, games, action games, 127 million people. Casino games, 21 million. Uh, FPS, 374 million. So you can select several interests and you should go uh, again deeper like mine is art let's see where would that be at shopping hobbies I can start typing art arts and music that's fine that reaches 761 million people or so work of art. It might start giving you suggestions. I would say, yeah, uh, select a few of those suggestions because this is, again, Facebook trying to understand what your page is about so that your page can be viewed by more people that would care about you. And again, what's the point of all of this social media? It's nice to get likes and it's nice to get favorites and all of that, but the point of all of this social media is to drive people back to your website where you will sell them the product, where you will get hired for your skills, where you will get a new gig for your band, where you will have more people join your community. So if you can get this advertisement in front of more people, hopefully more people then will complete the goal that you want them to. So I've selected a few interests here. I can always add more, of course. Uh, I've got artisan, work of art, arts and music. That's good. I can add more. I can change it later. It might pop up like this. I have these interests and then I chose another one drawing because that's what my art is going to be and it says your ad is currently targeted to arts and music do you want to narrow it to drawing that's good if it if it can if it kind of asks you would you like to target a little bit more I would say okay because again it's good to be advertising to 120 million people but if you're advertising to 1 million people that really care you'll have more likely chance of someone actually buying your stuff. So then I'll click Save. You may get a pop-up that gives you an overview of your Facebook profile. Your Facebook business page profile will be a little bit different than your um, personal one. So I'm going to take a quick look at this tour up on top, getting around. Everything you need to manage your page are in these tabs. Notice I've got page. That's like to look at the profile itself. What does, what does this look like to people that go to your page? At the moment, my page has this huge Facebook name. Facebook.com slash pages slash Victor's Art slash 4569, whatever. Uh, I want the nice short Facebook.com slash Victor's Art. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But that's what this screen will look like to people that visit your page. Messages are a way for a customer or a client or a potential customer to contact you with a tech support question or you know, uh, help with your product or a compliment or whatever. You can turn that on or off. If you don't want people to bother you with a message here, we can turn that off. I'll show you how. But I believe it's on by default. 
Notifications you should be familiar with if you use Facebook, just like on the top right corner you have those icons. Has someone liked my post? Has someone replied to my post? Has someone shared something with me? Notifications. There's a screen for them there. We've got posts. As a business page, we can schedule posts. So instead of being tied to your computer every day that you want to post something, you can spend one day a couple of hours, write five posts, and schedule them. So one will appear this Monday, one will appear on Wednesday, one will appear on Friday, one will appear on Sunday automatically. So we can manage those under the posts screen. So that's pretty useful. Um, Twitter has something like that too, but you have to use a slightly different system. You don't have it yet, but eventually you'll have a tab called Insights. Insights are where it will show you how many likes you've gotten, what's the gender of your audience, what's the number one time that people visit your page, and the day and the city and all of that so you can see all of these stats you don't have that yet because you've got a brand new page so I'm going to click that next button if you see yours then it tells me here like Victor's art show support for the work you've done setting up your page by liking it when people visit your page they will see that at least one person has been here before so sure I'll like my own page So I've got at least one like on Facebook. And then on the right side, you'll see some quick stats. How many page likes you've gotten, any unread notifications or messages. Select next. <clears throat> so I've made my brand new page here. There's still things I want to do to really refine it so that it doesn't look like a generic account. We'll do that because you might be tempted on the left side here, you've got the names of your various friends and a button that says invite. Don't select those invites yet because what you're doing there is you're saying to your friends and family, hey, like my page, like my page. But if they look at it, they might not because there's nothing there. They might grudgingly like your page because you're friends and you're asking them to. But maybe you can entice them to really like your page once there's actual content. And I wouldn't take it bad if you, even if you put content and you've got your graphics and everything's great, and you invite people to like your page and they still don't like it, I wouldn't take it bad because your friends and family most likely are not going to be your demographic anyway. They're not going to be the people you're selling to. Maybe in the beginning, once in a while, people will buy your art, your friends and family, or maybe they will buy your pottery or whatever, but they're not going to be your, your main customer, probably. You're probably going to get a bunch of other new people. So it's nice to get some of your friends and family to like your page, but if they're not, if they're not going to follow through, if they're not going to be active on your profile if they're not going to buy your products it might not be that useful so let me show you one important thing here then we'll take a break and then when we come back we will further edit up we will further edit our page so that it doesn't look so basic as I said now we've got a uh, personal page and a business page and from what I'm seeing here, I'm still using Facebook as my personal account. So if I were to write a new post here, it might add it as my personal account instead of my business. Because I can see that my personal name is up there. So let's get used to switching between the accounts with the little triangle up there. I'm sure it has an official name, a little black triangle, use Facebook as. So if you, if you go to your triangle and you find your page and you click on it, notice how this changes and now it should say your name right there. You're using your business page as your business. And Facebook has gotten better at making it so that you don't accidentally 
uh, post as the wrong account. But it's happened to me enough that I don't trust it. So I trust it when I switch between here and my personal and switch between here and my business. So get in the habit. You're going to log in with your personal account and then right away switch to your business page on the top right corner. And you want to confirm that once you've added your your logo right here, add a photo, it's going to show up there. So on your personal, most likely you have your picture right there. So then on your business, you're going to have your business logo. So here I am on my business page. It's saying your profile is 33% complete, mine at least. It's saying you don't have a, a profile picture, which is this logo. You don't have a cover photo, which is this picture back here. And I have filled in contact info. Uh, we probably have to still fill in more, which we'll do together in a moment. But these are the two things I really recommend you do as soon as you can. Add your profile picture and your cover photo uh, so that your page doesn't look generic like everyone else's. So at this point, we've created our business page. Let's take a break. When we come back, I'll show you some more nuances here um, and why else Facebook is important. So we'll take a 10-minute break. 612, we'll be back at 622. If you need any help, call me over. <laughs> 